Hi, storytellers. My name is Richard Thorne, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. <laughs> I was about to say Cuphead, but this is obviously not Cuphead. Uh, when I loaded up this up, it said Amanda's crying, so I got a feeling this part we're about to go into ain't that good. It's been a long day. Oh, yeah, we just got done with our second date, if you don't remember. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall into my room. Be gone, mouse! I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffs. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. Whoa, what happened? You, you guys accepted into college and everything, didn't you? What the heck is... Oh. My undies got a string. It was I'm like, what the hell is touching my back? Okay. Well, who gives a lot of spider? In the dark, I can see Amanda's outlet in the middle of her bed. Knee, knees hugged up against her body. I don't cool if she actually was like... Actually showed that. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Uh, hi, Loon. Hi, baby girl. Uh, something must have happened or leave her alone. Uh, do you keep on pushing when she's so upset or do you let her have her space? What do you think, Luna? One or two? All right, she left, so we're going to leave her alone. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Oh, my heart! Wow, I had no idea what has her so upset. She seems totally normal. I just feel awful just leaving her to cry. But I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally circling through all the sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. Oh, you're such a good dad, Beaver. After a full night of a, a very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe I'll, may, maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She do she hasn't looked at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? Uh. No. Okay. <laughs> do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still frozen burn waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda puts up picks up her bag and storms out. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table, look at the picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Oh, I hate bikes. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, undirected fear. Exactly. I remember how determined she was. Every time she fell off and scraped her knee, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. So I put the bike away. She just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it's like nothing ever happened. After giving it a big a thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda... Okay, enough with the slamming of the doors. You don't need to break them. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading to the kitchen like she norm usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I got scared and I, when I know something's wrong, and I got even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. But whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Mm. Hun, you know 
I'm bad with words, so I'm hoping I can speak a language we both understand. BAM! Cake! That's the only language anyone understands. I pull out a cake out of the freezer and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me- Oh, that, that's so good. Oh, you're such a good dad. It took a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over and this is beautiful. It's strawberry. The man, it gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and sor serve us up some delicious cake. Man, I would love cake right now. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and I just, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I just feel like I've been... To make you, I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take oh. notes? I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The one who puked in Bed Bath Beyond, the best friends, the other one? No, listen. <laughs> hey, I got it right! Look at me! Oh, you go throw me Detective Thor for a reason! You got it. Wow, I'm proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot of more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M. that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noel, all went to a party at McFreed's F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for Calgary's AP final. Yikes. I've never had friends, so I don't really understand that, but that just sounds really, really bad. Mm. So, another important piece of the information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I have a crush on Norn, and, um, that's a thing. What? Whoa! I had no idea. Definitely didn't know about that, okay? <laughs> You're a bad liar. So are you! I learned from the worst. Uh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anyone. And I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I kept quiet and kept going about my business. And then one day I invited everyone out to get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they were busy, like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat the nachos at home, right? But when we're out of chips, I really want nachos. Totally understand. Oh, totally understandable. Totally understandable. Aww. So I go to the mall anyway, and I get the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, and Emma R. Nort, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? Yeah. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Nort has his arms around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. <laughs> yes, I know. So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because, of course, she does. And Emma R just like scare, st glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up. Oh, I don't know who she is. Grace is the boring one, the gossip one. Does she poop on the uh, gossip people? Yeah. I know. <laughs> How am I getting these right, or is it just is it just programmed to say I'm right no matter which one I pick? Grace is the only is the one nobody really likes and I, I I guess that that's me now but anyway nobody will say anything and I'm just like you guys suck which I realize is not the most elegant thing to say but I was very angry and really embarrassed and I just wanted to get out of there so I left without nachos I might add which only further contributed to the shitty day and immediately draft a super long text to the group chat asking him why they had been so weird I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noran thing has been going on and sorry I know it's a lot you still following uh uh what did MR say yeah I got it they she was a group of friends she told her that uh MR that she had a crush on Norton and it sounds like MR and Norton are now going out and they all kind of abandoned her for some reason oh okay Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Oh, that's never good. Emma pull Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word 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 and an a long string of text mm. message. Can you believe that? 
I can't believe it because I don't even know what it said. So I'm going to say yes to believe in them something I didn't see. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being. But man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest uh. to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on read. And then, wait, left me on read what's that i'm glad you asked because i have no idea and like she saw my message and didn't reply and now because there are read receipts i don't know what read receipts are but i'm just gonna nod and pretend i understand you know what i'm gonna do that too beaver you have good advice gotcha so while this is happening i'm talking to emma p about how mad i am because she's at least kind of res reasonable i'm venting to her about how pissed i am at everyone and stuff and i don't know where nort texts me it's like how could you say that about me and i'm like say what about you and she tells me that emma p sent a screenshot of everything i told her to the group chat that i got kicked out of wow that's fucked up <laughs> all right i think you lost me at screenshots but that definitely sounds bad there's so much more but honestly it's all just really stupid teenager stuff let me give you a little advice, Amanda. Kick their asses to the curb. You don't need them. The bottom line is that whenever anyone dropped me, half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Oh, you against the world, baby doll. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost I almost suspected from everyone else, but Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Nort. I just obsessed that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay. I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's staying nor. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why was I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everyone, like, I miss them, Dad. And I look so uh, dejected that I almost, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to oh, help? Oh, no. Nothing. Absolutely, there's nothing you can say to make this situation any better. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole solid truth. Tell. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No. It's a stupid thing to be said over. No, it's not! It's your friends! It's your life! You have a right to be upset over it. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. Exactly. Good job, Beaver. See, you got this. I guess. Unless you're secretly been a robot who's been approximately human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. I would have chosen a motorcycle myself, but good choice. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duties as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Uh, high school sucks. Yes, yes, high school does suck. Not all friendships last forever. That's very true. Real friends don't do that. That's also true. And high school sucks. That's also true. None of this is going to help her feel better, though. <sighs> um, what to pick, what to pick, what to pick. I mean... Um, nothing. I mean, high school sucks, college sucks. I mean, education sucks, period. I guess I'll go with this one. Because she's not really talking about high school. She's talking about her friends and stuff. So I feel like this one's probably the best. People are going to come in and out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every relationship is going to last forever. So cherish your friends while you have them. And when it's over, don't dwell so much on the bad stuff. You had some good times with MR, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it, keep moving forward. There's so many new friends to make, and they're going to be so much closer, cooler than MR and the rest. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing, and if they don't see that, well, that's their problem. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. I looked down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Huh. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. <laughs> God, I wish I had cake. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes. Huh. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, man. I love you too, Dad. Oh, 
much he said it. Oh my heart. Oh my heart. That's so cute. Welcome. You've got dads. We got dads. More for dads. Ooh, Craggy boy. What? What? Are, what are you up to? Can I? Whoops. That's not what I wanted. Where? Where did my little thing in the go? What, well, Craig? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have a nice and smart kid who who are good at computers. Oh man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still... Strong? Strong. I'm still strong. Okay, that's what I thought you meant to text. Uh, don't I know it. Say, I've been reading up about... About wheat protein? You use that at all? I figured it helped me develop a little bit more muscle. Yes, I know what it is. My children are having a tea party and they want to invite Amanda. But we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physically invited to follow. Cool. I love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you. Amanda's dad. Let's attend that party. You're young. You have health. Now it's the time to take risk. You hear that? Go take... Mm, that's probably bad advice. Don't listen to me. Coffee time! You know dads love coffee. Gotta brew myself something black as midnight on a moon moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and I work on a few word jumbles while I eat it. Wait for it to brew. Eat it for brew. I eat it for brew. Just stick that IV in. Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweet sweetie. Gotta tackle it head on. No, are you ready for the thing that we're gonna do today? The thing that you promised you'd do? Hun, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tim Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over. You don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, Dad. Nope, I don't remember that. <laughs> Craig's kids, that hand-drawn invitation. And then he walks over to the fridge and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing's stopping me. That's right. Nothing's stopping me. Mm. Dad, just... Uh, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Fuck authority. <laughs> oh, let's put on some going outside uh. pants. We'll be a responsible dope. Hey, they're cute. Hello, thank you for coming to our tea party. I try my best to bow and present my daughter who thinks them with a curtsy. This way, please. Bree, Bree and Hazel leads us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals and Maddie and his daughter Carmencita are here too. Matt raises a comical small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste a hint of lemonous. Hello, Car Carmencita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Please, have a seat. I sit down between Aman Amanda Amanda, and Matt. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Oh, I hated that. Like, sometimes in high school they had those really small chairs and you sit on them and like... My fat butt is not gonna get out of this desk. I need an ambulance. Help! Call in the reinforcements. Hello, everyone. Hey. I turn to see Daisy and Ben enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. <laughs> Manny gives me an annoying look and I return it in a obliging wink. She rolls her eyes. Mm. I can't wink, so as much as I want to try to do that, I'm not going to. <laughs> Is that really something your daughter had to be so you pressure you into, Ben? Brian. Why did I say Ben? Brian. I give Amanda another, even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule for some high tea. Actually, it's common misconception that high tea was approved by no <laughs> nobles. Dad, shut up! I cannot fucking read. Oh my god. Now, if y'all would put on your designer ti tiaras. There's some little tiaras sitting on everyone's plate. Well, except for Brian's. 
His is a softball hat. Oh, we ran out of tiaras. I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're royalty. Please act like it. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on his head, but it immediately tumbles off and into the bushes. I'll get that later. Hey, everyone. Her comes out with a teapot and a ti and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Mm -hmm. er, yeah, it's been uh, stupid for a while now. Awesome. Would you girls like to serve your guest tea? No, thank you. We much appreciate our servant's help. Crackling's over to me. That's me. <laughs> Good job, Craig. Craig placed tea, tea cups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm, wonderful fragrance for tea. I, I click my teacup with mats and takes a sip. Uh -oh. Good lemon. It's tea. Hey. Right, very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? Huh? We enjoy the specklers of higher, upper class society, Father. She takes a dinner bite of her sandwich hey. cookie. Marvelous. So, the meeting of princesses has been called to order. Here, here! <laughs> But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff, and I have, like, a really cool sword. Yeah. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. <laughs> and I'll be a rock a rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Wow, couldn't think of anything better besides stealing someone else's princess? Can there be more than one? No, no, they can't. Come on, there's, a, there's enough princesses that you can figure out your own princess. Be a magical princess huh? or something. Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. Oh my god, <laughs> don't follow, you stupid sheep. Be something else. I don't know why I'm getting so ticked off about this. <laughs> I changed my mind. I want to be a space mm. princess too. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me history channel princess, hacker princess, rude boy princess. Oh, I kind of want to do rude boy princess, but there's a bunch of little girls. <sighs> there we go. If I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> nice. Oh. I think I'll be the landscaper and general contracting uh -huh. princess. Ready, the princess, reporting for duty. Oh. Hey, everyone, CrossFit princess here. <laughs> Not now, servant. <laughs> Poor Craig, you don't get to be a princess. Oh, I feel sorry for you. If it weren't for the princess's uprising, it'd be you serving me. We sip tea for a little while longer, and then the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rocket star warrior princesses, I think. That's a long title. They grew up so fast. It was like yesterday that I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Nice. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Car Carmen... S Carmencita, ah, that's a very hard name for me, made me actually brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Pitfall? Your customer blends are amazing. That hype six one you gave me a while back was choice? Oh. Ah, thanks. Hey. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad we moved into this community. Oh. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I haven't even realized, and I don't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're right. All the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems out of she seems to go out of her way to play with them. Oh, my baby girl's so good. I am so proud of her. You better not proud dad cry at this You better not proud dad cry at this tea party, Beaver. Yeah, Beaver, what's wrong with you? I slap you. I slap you. I bought extra wood jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time while the girls play. Oh, Mouse, how long have you been on screen? I banished you! The days rolled on and the girls all get tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and help put away the tea sets and tables and then head out as Daisy and Carmencita fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Hmm. 
Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, Rude Boy Princess. Hmm? Can that be my name from now on? I want to be Rude Boy Princess from now on. <laughs> you want dinner? Nah, I feel up on cookies. Me too. I'm tired. <laughs> Dude, saw so playing with a bunch of the little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Hmm. But in a good way, but also kind of in a scary way. How so? Huh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want to let them down. Is that because you feel real- you feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin at one time? Oh. Huh. I corrupted her, Dad. She secondhand smokes now. Well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Mm. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Oh, shucks, Pop. Welcome. You've got dads. You got dads. I love having dads. Okay. Nothing there. Nothing there. What about this one? Nothing there. Okay, we're going on a little date with our Damien boy. I really like him. You know what they say about third dates? They're pretty serious. You might, you might not have time to browse dad books for a while. Are you ready? All the, uh, is this gonna end the game if I do this? Uh, you know what? I'm fine with that. Yes. Yes, take me on my third date. Take me on my third date with my handsome vampire man. Never, never give up. Never surrender. Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We're going on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I in internally post protested, but he gave me one of his old signature rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hanging out with goth dad again? Please, Amanda, you know his name. And yes, oh. be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him to our household that one time, and I seen the Lost Boys, and I'm, and I honestly want, I honestly would have preferred trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Yes, Amanda, I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, sweetie. Ugh. Turn into a bat. I can't think, Aww. what's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? She has a point. Well, okay, I'm off. Are you taking the car or are you going to fly off into the night on the le leathery wings of a bat? One of those. While I'm out, can you throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die? That would be great. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. Oh, I died. Damon and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak, he hates when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is this is gonna seem like a silly question, but why do goths wear black? Uh, crap. Well, this is the place I gave for him. Goth subculture has always been associated with death, so I would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Huh. Interesting enough, though, was that in the Victorian era, Queen Victoria herself Wanted the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Huh. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life or something. Oh, no. Uh, I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. Huh. It's a single, universal truth for every human who has ever lived. I am going to die. You are going to die. And life carries on without us. Doesn't that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the, adventure, the advances of modern medicine, death was everywhere in the Victorian era. And yet, funerals were major society functions. 
Victorians were obsessed with the memories of their loved ones, even going so far as to take liberate stage pit photographs of their dead relatives. The minimum of mourning was so complex that there were set of periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life has passed. Now, we don't have any of that. You lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equipment of loss formalities. We, we need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not allow it to consume us. So no, I'm not afraid of death. I believe it's a waste of I believe it is a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. The time we have here is brief and fleeting and occasionally cruel, but it is all but it is at all times precious. To stare death in the face and live despite that, I think is a noble experience. That's save the morning for the dead. Oh I like this! This guy has it right on point. Wow, that's Beautiful. Exactly, Beaver, you get it. Oh, I'm so glad I picked this guy. I can see the moonlight and the bay glitter off at Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn into the harbor and watch the ship pass, breathing in the salty sea air. I look to Damien again, and I can't help but be enchanted by his charm, his myst mysterious. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do. Yeah. I'm... So sorry, I had to take this. Ah, oh, you ruined it! <laughs> Come on, that was a perfect kissing moment! Damien steps away from me to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't Lucan again. Oh, I forgot about his kid. After speaking in hushed tones for a few minutes, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? Oh my. Whoa, okay, that was loud. There's an emergency. Luke? Hmm. No, thankfully, but I must take my leave. Oh. Okay, is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Hmm. Dads do have to stick together, right? You know it! Hmm. Then come. There isn't much- there isn't time to waste. I feel like Power Rangers. Dads, stick together! After a short drive in silence, we arrive at the rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. I push a surprisingly heavy door open and find myself in a dim lit waiting room. A few rickety chairs align the walls, and there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures on the wall, but they're so non scribbit that I'm still unsure of what kind of place this I I even is. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. Are we in a hospital? Or a doctor's office or something? Damien walks off down a corridor. His book. His. Boot heels echoing throughout the walls of this seemingly empty building. Distant howls echoes from some place I couldn't see, and there's a faint scratching sound like claws on tile. I carelessly peek down the hall and find stall after stall of scared looking dogs. A few of them notice me and scribble up to the chain like fence, sticking their noses through to sniff at the air. What have I got myself into? Oh, is this a kennel? Suddenly, the lights turn off. I panic, unsure of what I am. Or Unsure of where I am or how I got out, I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien! The lights finally turn back on. Hello, sailor. Mary, what are you doing here? You aren't here for the fight club? I, um, don't want to get punched in the face. Great, because this is an animal shelter. A what? Hmm. We take care of stray animals, and then people adopt the stray animals. Don't you see the pets when you walked in? Oh, I just... Sorry, I didn't really expect to see you volunteering at an animal shelter. Ugh. Wow. Okay, kid. Way to put me in a box. Damn, you hear this... What? Balance? Just one moment. Thunder cracks and the door bursts open! Appearing from the shadows, I see... Damien! <laughs> oh my god, I was not expecting that! Oh, good! Nice look at Damien! He really pulled it off. Oh my god, going from his Victorian attire to that is... Oh my god, I'm so... <laughs> I'm so glad this isn't real life. That would probably really hurt his feelings if I started laughing like that. 
<laughs> I feel kind of bad, but that was really funny. Dang. <laughs> hey. It's Damien. He looks so completely different. No cloak, no Victorian era clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side of me until much later, but I'm not as goth as you think. I, I'm a systems a minister for the IT department of a, of a re, retail, rental company. I wear tennis shoes to work and I listen to you. Bruce Springsteen. I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking at at storage solutions. And I volunteer at this animal shelter in my spare time. I'm boring. Dude, you're fucking amazing! <laughs> I'm fascinated with Victorian history and goth lifestyle. That much is true. I just not all that I am. I need you to know that. Oh, I, uh... <laughs> Can I kiss him, please? Can we just like very go go away so I can kiss this man? <laughs> Hate to kill the moment here, but there's some pushing business that needs to attend to. <gasps> Again, loud. Oh right, it's Duchess Cordell. Again, who's Duchess? Cordell. She's one of the pups that gets out all the time. She got she somehow learned how to open the doors and now she's unstoppable. When did she get out? Hey. This morning I went to go sing see Santis to the cats and when I came back she had already bolted. I had to stay here with the pet, so I need you to go and find her. Of course. Where would where could she be? She always ends up running off to the same places. Here, let me draw you a map. Mary starts scrolling on the back of a pet adoption ah. form. She's very smart, ruthless even. You need to stay on your toes and get her back by sundown, or else she turns into a werewolf and starts eating people. What? <clears throat> you're, you're a perfect little peach, beaver. Ah. We just don't want her to be stuck outside when it's cold. Oh. Ah. I'll grab some treats and we can hit the road. Damien and I look over the map Mary created for us. Oh, man. Oh man, I'm nerd's house? Oh, the other nerd's house? Nerd's house. That one's ours? At least you're not the other nerd's house. Ah, okay. Nerd's, nerd's house. We got it. Looks like you're moving up in the pe pecking order. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? Um, okay, so this is a shelter. You pretty much drew the whole town. How's there's a few pa places she likes to go? So, this is our cul-de-sac. So she could be at the softball field, base side, the aquarium, or the coffee spoon. I am gonna check the base side. Dave and I exit the parking lot and start driving towards town. I look over to him and he seems concerned. Shouldn't be too hard to find the Duchess, right? She's a pretty big pup. Mary wasn't kidding when she said that dog was smart. One time she correctly guessed the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It was a really great year for Bark Bark Bark. Um, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, Beaver? This will be easy. Gotta stay positive. Abandon all hope, y'all who enters here. You gotta stay positive, dude. My dad once told me, Beaver, you can't shove raisins up your nose. And that hurt my feelings. I felt discouraged, and I kept a positive attitude, and you know what? I made it happen. <laughs> I don't think that's your best example there, Beaver. Ew. It might have landed me in the ER and forced me to have ten gold raisins removed from you shoved tin raisins up your nose? What's wrong with you? But I, but on that day, I learned that anything is possible if you have a good attitude and a band and abnormally large nostrils. Young children really are resilient, I suppose. <laughs> yes, young children. I was 16. I was about to say, are you, you were a young kid when you did that. Let's hope for the best. We got this.
You right back at the bayside. Oh, well, that's right, we were just here. Just like old times, huh? I remember it as if it were yesterday. I mean, earlier today. So, what do you think? Any sign of the pooch? Not yet. Though, who knows if she made it into any of these ships. The Duchess would do that? I want put it past her to know how to navigate in rough seas and without a compass. Very smart. Pops? Then I turned to see my my daughter. Amanda, what are you doing here? Did you think I was just staying inside all day, vegging out on the couch and watching TV? Oh, sorry. What are you doing here? I'm heading, uh, I'm heading home to go veg out on the couch and watch TV. I had to get a burrito first. Smart girl. Young miss, have you seen a dog around here? Yeah. Oh, you bet! I saw a per 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 monin per monin per monin uh with a bow around his neck. I saw a big old Doverman named Henry. There were a stroller full of Yorkies, a Greyhound, a Golden Retriever. Holy crap! This beach is busy. Did you see a mastiff anywhere? Hmm. No dice. I definitely don't. I definitely would have remembered oh. that. I gotta run though. This burrito has about 10 minutes before the cheese breaks down the monocle structure of the uh, tortilla and makes it all sloppy. You understand. I do? Uh. Of course. Have a lovely e evening, Miss Butt. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot I named that! Oh, that's so good. Okay. So she's not, not at the base side. Um, if she's hungry, she could have gone to the coffee spoon. <sighs> we parked in front of Matt's coffee shop and walked inside. It seemed like a slow day. Matt sits behind the counter reading a book. Hey, Matt! Oh. Didn't expect to see you two today. What's up? Oh. Have you seen any strange dogs around? Hmm. Can't say I have. You looking for one? Can you just drive them to me? Enormous. Hmm. That's pretty well covers oh. it. Cool. I find strays digging for food scraps in the alley out back sometimes. I'll be sure to keep an eye out. We head back to the car. Okay. Mouse, be gone! Okay. I did the coffee shop. I did Bayside. Okay, might as well just go to the softball field. We drive to the softball field. It looks like Craig's team is pressing. I wonder if you think he saw something. Craig spots us and jogs over. Softball bat slung over his oh. shoulder. Hey, Bowles, what's up? Craig, you wouldn't happen to have seen a dog around here, have you? We want to escape from the dog animal shelter, and we're trying to locate her. Oh. Hmm. Don't think so. Maybe one of the girls oh. saw something. Girls! Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucan's dad. We have names. Girls, have you seen any dogs around? There's a big, there's a big dog here earlier. She ran off a little while ago, though. I don't think she had an owner, but it really wanted to play. We tried to play fletch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of a dog. Here's another softball. Might come in handy later. Many thanks, Craig. Many thanks, my good man. It, okay, aquarium. It's probably at the coldest, that would be my bet. Then I stopped by the aquarium. Everything looks in order here, but it might help to get out of the car and take a look around. You see anything? Oh, no. Mm, no dog here. Not in a sign of her. Hmm. Do you know that penguins are considered the goths of the sea? Damien, I want to believe you so badly. I fear that the hours are growing short. We must make haste if we are to find the Duchess by sundown. Damien's looking more stressed out by the minute. I gotta think of something to lighten the mood. Uh, knock knock. How many goths does it take to screw in a light bulb? What kind of dog does a vampire have? I imagine it would be unwise for a vampire to take up companion of a smaller mammal for the means of companionship. It'd be too tempting to. A bloodhound. I was going to say a bloodhound, Damien. <laughs> oh, I did bad. Oh, I did bad. Oh, bad. Bad. Oh, yes. Ha ha. Jeez. I keep reading Damien's direction from the map so we ride around town. Alright, only one place left to go. Cul-de-sac. We're driving through the cul-de-sac, and everything seems pretty normal. It looks like Brian's doing some yard work. We pull up into Brian's driveway and hop out. Hey, don't step on the grass. I just mowed. Have you seen any unusual activities in the area today? Aside from your unwanted, unwatered yawn? 
Oh, here we go. How dare you! I take my lawn care very seriously. Beaver, please. Huh. You haven't seen a dog run through here, have okay. you? Well, a few hours ago, I heard Maxwell barking at something. When I came outside, my garden had been torn to shreds. It's gonna take forever to retile the soil. Hmm. That could be a dog or a really feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, it must have been hungry. It all my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need any assistance restoring it to its former glory, please don't hesitate to contact me. Will do, buddy. Good luck finding that dog. Hmm. She's probably still hungry. I wonder if she's looking for more food somewhere. So, back to the back to the coffee shop. I mean, I think the coffee shop's the only thing that would have food. They took the aquarium off, so it's not there. We were just at the cul-de-sac. The softball field wouldn't have anything. I don't think the beach would have anything. The beef has the burritos, though. God, how hard is it to find a stupid dog? I'm sorry, the dog's not stupid. <laughs> Dave and I arrived back at the bayside. Doesn't seem like anything's here has changed. We should try somewhere else, huh? I fear the night grows closer and closer with each passing breath. We must find the Duchess soon. This is serious. I hope we find her. What, what am I supposed to do? We head back into the coffee shop. Coffee spoon. Hey, Matt. Guys, I think I might have seen that dog you were looking for. I... You did? A brown mastiff? <clears throat> Size of a house? Yeah, I saw it digging through the trash in the backyard. It ran away when I tried to get closer, though. Did you see what direction it ran to? It, Matt thinks for a moment. Might have been running east, I think. That pup tore through three panels of old right side banana bread. Want to take some for the road, just in case? Sure thing. Matt packs up a slice. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. This right side banana bread's gonna be so good. I think he meant to give it to you for the dog. Right, I meant it's gonna be so good for the dog to eat. It feels like we're on the right track. You think? If we if we keep this up, we'll find the Duchess in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Luke is severely allergic. I wouldn't put him through that. But there are still dogs in my life, so for that I'm grateful. There is about to be one more dog in your life, buddy. Splendid attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Very? Okay, so if I was at the spoon shop and she headed east. Cold or sack? Really close fact to sign. Everything looks normal. Except. Uh oh. Hugo's front door is wide open. She could open doors. Oh no. This is classic Duchess. A tall tale sign. We should approach with caution. Whatever goes down in there, I've got your back. We creep up into the porch and step inside. <gasps> Buffers, we found you! There, sitting in the center of Hugo's living room like she owns the damn place, is one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Woof! Well, she hasn't broken anything in here. Yet. Hmm. Wonderful. Now all we have to do is get this leash on her before she tries to escape again. Get out of here before Hugo comes home. Easy peasy. Mm. Duchess, come here. The Duchess eyes Damien weary as he approaches. She begins to growl. She's on her guard. We'll need another plan. Uh, banana. Wow, you really like the banana idea. I reach into my pocket and pull out the slice of right side banana bread Matt gave me. Duchess sniffs the air and hones in on the bread. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. I've got some yummy, homemade, virgin, and possibly gluten-free banana bread, if it's what you're into. The Duchess closely approaches and gives the bread a good sniff before gently taking it from her hand and dumping it on the ground. Like dogs always do for some reason, she curls up and starts munching on the bread. Success! Damien walks up behind the Duchess and attaches the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts mm. whining. It's time to go home now, Duchess. Duchess gives a... Damien gives a tug on a leash. She won't move. Huh. Duchess, what happened to our report? You and I used to do bosom buddies. She still doesn't move. She's huge. There's no way we can even try to lift her. Well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we're literally trespassing in our friend's house with this log dog. What are you nerds doing? Hunter stands in the door with a plate of pizza rolls. Don't tell your dad about this. We're definitely not... 
<laughs> what flavor of pizza rolls are those? Uh, pepperoni blast. Nice. The Duchess knows Ernest and starts pulling against the leash. Why is this dog in my house? It's a long... Duchess successfully breaks free from naming grabs and, and hurts towards Ernest. Ah! Ernest and Duchess fall to the ground. Pizza, f pizza rolls fly everywhere. Jeez, do you guys not feed the dang dogs at the kennel? They shouldn't. She shouldn't be going after food like this. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds Duchess a pizza roll. Hey, she likes pizza rolls. Ernest sets up, but the dog keeps looking at his face. Oh, hey. Ernest stands in the doorway, looking like he's at a loss for what? words. What? Why are you guys? Whose dog is this? It's a long story, but it involves a large dog who knows how to open doors. Boof. Hugo, may I present to you Duchess? Uh. How do you do? Boof. We're friends! The Duchess looks at Arna's face. She's from the local animal shelter. She got out and we've been chasing her all around town. Mm. Your house was her final stop. Dad, can we keep her? <sighs> Ernest, I don't know if we're set up to take care of a- huh? Wait, did you just call me dad? Come on, please, look how cute she is. Oh. Ernest sighs. We have been talking about adopting a dog for a while, but you have to promise me you'll take care of her. Yay, I'll give her all the pizza rolls her little heart desires. Not the best idea. I suddenly remember what's on the back of this map and pull out a, a, a pin out of my pocket. Got the forms ready for you if you're interested. I'll even waiver the adoption fee since, you know, we technically broke into your house. Mm. Well, alright, it's a deal. Hugo steps onto the porch with us, and we sign forms while Ernest plays with Duchess inside. He sure seems to be happy with his new oh. friend. I know! He called me Dad! Can you believe it? Damien places a hand on Hugo's <laughs> shoulder. I certainly can. I think this will be really good for Ernest. It should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks on your doors, though. The Duchess is a wily one, but do right by her and she'll love you too forever. Thank you. Oh, it's so cute. Duchess got at home. We got on a really good date. And we got to see Damien in regular clothes. <laughs> My dog is looking at me like, what are you doing? And long story short, the Duchess now lives in a happy home and neither of us are charged for breaking and entering. So all in all, I think it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Hey. Beaver, you can be a re valuable asset to our team of volunteers. You know, if you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. Mary, I always feel like petting puppies. Ah. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you fellas later. Mari starts to leave. And one last ah. thing. Damien's been telling me about you. Glad he's finally brought you around. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Damien's my special boy. I love him. We go way back, and I got a vested interest in the health, the sex, and well Have you ever heard of him? Mary. Hey. You can fill me. You can fill in the blanks. Got it. Shovel talk. Taking it seriously. I gulp. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Mary leaves me alone with Damien. So, about the whole goth thing. I, um, completely understand if you aren't interested in me anymore. What? I. Am I missing something here? I'm not a cool goth prince. I'm boring. I own five pairs of tennis shoes. I wear dumb sunk, sunk dumb glasses. Don't you care? He looks so nervous. Damien, do you really think I only like you because of all the goth stuff? That's all cool, but best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, strange storage solutions. It doesn't matter what it is, you care, and that's awesome. And also, the glasses are very cute. I totally agree! <sighs> you don't think I'm boring at all? If you were boring, then I don't know what that makes me. I spend too much time online shopping for flashlights. I get excited to mow my own lawn on Saturdays. I get cranky about commercials being too loud. I've even been thinking about making my own peanut butter. <clears throat> then maybe we could be boring together. It would never be boring if it was with you. Oh, you guys are so cute! My heart can't take it! <laughs> Damon suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls me to a hug. He buries his face in my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. 
I was so scared you wouldn't like me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second, looks me in the eye. Without the colored contacts, his eyes are so dark and soulful. Ugh. May I kiss you? Does a bat have ways? Though, <laughs> though, art welcome. <laughs> Can I do this one? Maddie, you may take a pawn yourself. The, you know what? Just kiss me. He smiles slightly and leans and gives me a gentle kiss. Damon pulls away and gives me an interesting look. Do you want to help me take care of the puppies? Hell, yes, I do. <laughs> And we got the kiss! We got a kiss! David and I arrived back at the cul de sac. Our fa oh my god. Oh, mouse, go away! Uh, at the cul de sac, our fingers intertwine. Like a proper gentleman, he walks me to the doorstep. <clears throat> that was lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. I'm very happy I could be myself around you. I'm glad, but I have one request. Oh. What's that? Can we keep sending each other letters? <clears throat> but of course. Damon kisses me one last time for turning around and heading home. Amanda runs back to the couch by the window and tries to look as nonchalant as possible. Hello, father. I was sitting here on the couch this entire time. Hey, Amanda. So, are you guys, like, starting a vampire coven together? Oh, plot twist. Mothman, Damien's actually Mothman. I didn't see it coming either. Mm -hmm. Genius. Well, whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Aw, oh, shucks. I'm gonna head to bed. Catch you in the morning? Sure thing. I make my way to my room and fall into my bed, my heart full, excited for days to come. Oh, I'm so excited! Date complete! Dear friend, you've simply taken the egg on this one. Um, t taken the egg is a, uh, it's a, no! <clears throat> Crap. it's a, it's a Victorian phrase. It technically means winning, so, uh, you've, ultimately, you've, you've won. You've taken the egg on this one. God, how much more is how much more is this in the game? Should I should I stop this? Yeah, I'm gonna stop this here. <laughs> we we got a kiss from our date. Oh, date is so cute. I I laugh. I am so glad that he came out in that casual wear with no warning. That's like the best part of this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you warriors later.